Hello, and welcome back to another Magical Voxel tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you how to quickly create objects using some tools that I'll go ahead and discuss. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is mirror mode. What you can do with this is um, right now, I'm just going to drag out a square shape. And um, if I wanted this on like all four sides, it'd be fairly annoying to draw in manually, especially if you're going for symmetry. As you see, it is not very good looking. And doing this method, while you can take the eyedropper tool, copy and paste onto all four sides, you can do that. But that takes a little bit of time as well. If you just wanted to quickly get all four sides um, filled in right away, turn on mirror mode X and Y. And now if you drag this out, you can drag out on both the X and Y axis. So what if we turn one off? If we turn one off just on X, it's mirroring it only on the X axis and it's not going to be over here and vice versa on Y. So if I put an object here, it's going to put it on this side. With mirroring on the Z axis, it's basically the same thing as on X and Y, but um, instead of being on a 2D plane, you're going to be putting it on top. So if I keep dragging this, if I keep making something, it's replicating it up here as well. So if I have it all three of them on, you can do stuff like this. Like so, you can create something like that really quickly. Next thing we're going to take a look at is the axis mode. And I mostly use this for creating long lines or planes. So for instance, uh, instead of dragging out one line at a time, like so. Um, you can turn the axis mode on. And you just got to figure out which axis you want the lines to go on. And in box mode, with the attached to selected, I can just left click once and it puts uh, literally just a line going through the entire length of the object. And of course, it's um, depending on what axis you put it on, it's going to put a line wherever you place it. So now it's on the X axis, so it's placing it down this way. And with the Z, it's going to be going up and down like so. So this is useful because if I wanted to, say, make a line that goes from the top right here, I don't have to just so the traditional method to do this is just block down, go over the face mode, and drag it up. Um, that's a little bit tedious, so you can just turn the Z mode on, it's box mode, and you can just left-click once and not have to worry about switching over to face mode to drag up the one block. So that could be kind of useful for doing stuff like that. And you can also combine it just like with the uh, uh, mirror mode here. If I put X and Y, go to box mode, you can place floors or faces. And this is um, basically face mode, but it allows you to freely put it on whichever point, so to say. Because like if you go to face mode and try to place it like right here. Oops, I'm turning it off. It it just fills up this side because that's it's registering this as a face. But if I wanted it like here, you can do that with access mode. So going over to the right side here, over in the edit, edit section, if you go down to shape, you have all these shapes to choose from. So if you don't want to create a circle from scratch, you can just go over to the shape tool, go to cylinder and left click once and it creates a cylinder. And if you didn't want it to be this high, you just taste the face mode and just drag it down. 
Uh, however, if you want it like a spherical shape, you can just click this button here, ellipsoid, and it creates a sphere. And you can mess around with all the other ones. I mostly just use the ellipsoid cylinder and cone sometimes. I don't use the other ones, but um, everyone's different and I encourage experimentation. So with this cylinder, you can see um, it's completely filled in. It's not hollow, but if I wanted to make it hollow, I don't want to have to, you know, just create like manually try to create and make it hollow. You can actually go over here to modify and click on hole, which removes all invisible voxels. So if I click this and it applies it to the whole object, if I remove the top layer here, you can see all the voxels inside this uh, cil uh, cylinder has been erased because of the hole. But let's say um, I didn't want to do that. You can always just undo it or click on flood and flood will it's basically the inverse of hole. It'll fill all the invisible voxels with voxels. So now um, if I go to erase, erase, it's filled the whole thing. Okay, so let's go ahead and create just a simple object here. Something like this. And um, let's say I want to duplicate this multiple times going up. Instead of clicking Control A to select all, Control C, Control V to paste, and repeating this process, I can just go over to the repeat right here over in the edit section. And over here, just type Z, press 2. And now it's duplicated it um, twice, 1 and 2. And you can just keep doing this to create something like that. And this is way faster than manually copying and pasting. And it also works on X and Y. So if I wanted to make this go up by a little bit more, I can do that as well. And if I just type in a single number, it'll repeat um, this object on both X, Y, and Z, like so. So you can really create some cool intricate shapes using this method. So like this, and then you hit repeat. You can see you can create some cool looking structures relatively quickly. Let's say I have this pyramid here and I want to create some cool looking intricate shape. You can go over to the edit section and under diagonal, you can open it up and just start clicking both X, Y, and Z. Like so to create some cool looking shapes. And the last thing to take a look at is shear. So shear, shear is kind of weird, but um, it's mostly meant to like, so if you use these default settings right here, which when you open it up, it'll show this up and you click on it. You can see it's sheared um, basically going this way and this way by 0.2. Um, and if I undo this and I do it again and change it by 0.5, it should shear half of this going this way and half of it going that way. Like so. So you can create like sloping like roofs using this method. And um, it should be noted that you can just keep clicking this to get a more and more gradual slope. You don't have to undo everything. And like this basically has multiple uses. So I can just keep pressing enter to create the shape I want. So now I'm going to go ahead and use these settings that I've already mentioned 
to create some kind of weird sci-fi concoction. So after about 10 minutes of work, this is what I've come up with, and I gotta say, if I didn't use the 
tools that I showed you in the video. This probably would have taken an extra 20 or 30 minutes. So that just goes to show how powerful um, that these tools can be when used properly. So hopefully this video has helped and I'll catch you all in the next one.